could be a lot to talk about less lately. I'm sure we've all heard things um, such as minimalism, folks like less is more. Um, there's many different ways to look at the word less. And I'd like to share with you my story of being inspired by less and that truly living limitless uh, does not require more. So one of those things, I like to think back to one of my most productive times back in 2008 when I was working full time, uh, going to university full time and trying to buy a rental property. Uh, I was, as you can imagine, super busy and yet it was one of my best semesters percentage wise uh, during my whole four years of university. And that's not even it, once the next slide comes up. I also decided to do a 12 week fitness program at the same time. Uh, so that means I had to plan and eat six meals per day, go to the gym six days per week. But in the end, not only did I have good marks, but I lost 27 pounds of fat and gained seven pounds of muscle and dropped my body fat percentage by half. So I, I accomplished quite a bit with such a little amount of time that semester. Ironically, I had one of the worst semesters just a few months later when I was no longer working full time, no longer looking for a house, and no longer doing a 12 week fitness program. So, despite having more time, I actually did much worse in school. However, I can probably blame that on constantly dreaming about travel, which is something that had been on my mind for many years. But, like, uh, like many people with dreams of travel, I was one of the ones that were waiting for friends to join me, which was, of course, taking forever. I'd been stalling my own dreams of traveling across the world, in this case to Australia and New Zealand, for over seven years. All because I was waiting for more things to fall into place, that, that perfect moment. But after years of putting it off and waiting for the, the, the perfect moment when I had tons of money and tons of friends joining me, uh, I knew that it wasn't going to happen and that it was now or never. So I finally booked my flight to Australia. In this case, less really did become more. Because without friends, it uh, made me completely independent and allowed me to really explore myself. <clears throat> this transitioned into me finding my adventurous side, which led to me jumping out of a plane, jumping off of a bridge, uh, hang gliding over the sea, abseiling into caves, and even scuba diving with sharks, just to name a few. And without friends potentially holding me back, uh, I was free to say yes to anything that sparked my interest. But after those uh, six months down under, I knew I had to travel more. It was just what I, it had become a passion of mine to see the world. I didn't want to stop with Australia and New Zealand. I wanted to explore all the continents, uh, Asia, Africa, South America, Europe, and also here in North America. But I had to figure out how to travel for less because uh, as they say, a million rupees just ain't what it used to be. <laughs> Saving up for a one week trip wasn't much trouble, but traveling for six months of every year was going to be a little more expensive. So I learned about something called travel hacking from some bloggers in the US. And this is basically how to earn hundreds of thousands of frequent flyer miles without flying, and more importantly, how to redeem them for maximum value. Like this around the world business class trip my wife and I took last February for about 400 bucks. We flew business class uh, across the Atlantic to Europe, down to Africa for a couple of months, over to Japan for a month, and then back across the Pacific. Uh, not bad for a budget job, right? <laughs> <laughs> or just this past January when my wife and I flew business class to Hawaii, and then down to Micronesia for some scuba diving, and then over to Singapore, and back up to South Korea before coming back home when it was about $350. Uh, this trip would have easily cost about $10,000 had I not learned the art of travel hacking. Or, with the next slide, this is my, probably my most incredible feat this past December when both of us flew first class on Emirates from Dubai to Houston. It's like a crazy 17 hour flight of pure luxury with your own private seat, 27 inch TV, a shower at 40,000 feet, and even an onboard bar with free dong carry on. It's a $15,000 one way flight for $89. <laughs> but although I learned the art of free travel, I still needed to create some cash flow, and I always had another passion for entrepreneurship. So again, I didn't have much money, and because I was traveling the world, I really had to focus on less, trying to bootstrap a simple business uh, for less than 100 bucks. So I took what I already knew and started an online platform using WordPress, where I could help others do exactly what I was doing. I even managed to market my new business for free by using my personal story to get featured <laughs> in major national press such as full-page interviews in the Toronto Star and the Calgary Metro, as well as the Globe and Mail, the Flight Network, and Money Sense Magazine. 
I wasn't even able to see the Toronto Star article because when it launched, we were in China and the website was blocked. <laughs> so now I was satisfying my entrepreneurial passion for less, but it wasn't profitable enough for me to accomplish some of the bigger travel goals that I had, such as uh, I wanted to do a liveaboard diving trip in the Galapagos or one of the, the cool safaris that you see in Africa. So after years of slowly building a blog and perfecting my writing skill, I started uh, to barter with adventure companies and ended up getting sponsored for complimentary trips, such as joining a $6,000 seven-day luxury liveaboard in the Galapagos, where I was able to live my dreams of scuba diving with hammerhead sharks, marine iguanas, schools of barracuda, manta rays, and friendly seals, as well as just explore the beautiful islands where, where, where Darwin developed his theory of evolution. And I even got to do my 20-day safari for Tanzania and Uganda, where I got to see the lions and elephants, rhinos and giraffes on the Serengeti, as well as silverback gorillas and chimpanzees in the forests and mountains of Uganda. All of these more expensive adventures probably wouldn't have made their way into my life for, for, for quite some time had I not been inspired by Les. So as you, as you can see, like there's, there's many different ways to look at the word less. For some people, less might be getting rid of everything they own and living a life of simplicity. For others, it might be just trying to do less so they can have more time to do what they enjoy. Uh, for me, I just like to see how many things I can actually accomplish with less. And when, when I think of the word less, uh, two other things come to mind. First is that we really need to think hard about what's more important to us, and that whatever is not important, uh, you get rid of to make room for those important things, whether it's uh, mentally or physically. And second, that less is definitely not a hindrance. If anything, it can be an inspiration. <laughs> so to, just because you might have less or make less doesn't mean you can't dream big or do big things with your life. Many of the greatest things ever accomplished were inspired by some aspect of less. Whether you want to travel the world, start a business, inspire a movement, or cross a hundred things off your bucket list, don't let less discourage you. Let it inspire you to truly live in the list. <laughs>